All right, joining me once again here on the Matthew Filipovich Show is Hutch Harris. Hutch is the lead singer and guitarist of the rock band The Thermals, which you can find at thethermals.com, also on Twitter, at The Thermals. Hutch, thank you so much for being on the show again. Thanks, Matt. How's it going? It's going good, man. So, Hutch, you guys, The Thermals, you have a brand new album out on Saddle Creek Records. Uh, the new album's called We Disappear. Uh, just tell us, tell us about the album. Uh, yeah, uh, it's fantastic, of course. Of course it um, is. <laughs> it's our, this is our seventh record. <laughs> uh, we recorded with Chris Walla uh, from Death Cab for Cutie, or formerly of Death Cab for Cutie. Uh, Chris has, this is the fourth record that Chris uh, worked with us, uh, going all the way back to our first record. He mixed our first record like 14 years ago. Yeah. And uh, by the way, I, I want to say congrats. Like it really is an awesome record. Um, and pretty much across the board, uh, you know, you guys have gotten a ton of great press on it and deservedly so. Um, so I guess one of my first questions about it is when I saw you guys, you and Kathy were through Boston, uh, earlier this year, touring on uh, the re-release on vinyl of your acoustic album that you guys did, um, you were saying this this album isn't doesn't isn't so much a concept album, which is sort of like the the last you know obviously your last album was all about this this killer. You've done uh, an album you know entirely about death. Uh, you've done an album you know the body and blood of the machine about an angry Old Testament God and an evil government you know sort of. So this isn't really so much a concept album in that regard but it, there does seem to be a pretty strong theme it's, it seems like a breakup album to me is that is that correct it definitely is yeah that's what i've been saying mm -hmm. we always like we try not to say concept album just because to me or to some people it makes people just think of like I don't know, like just like stuff from the seven like <laughs> Alan Parsons project or stuff, which is like cool, but it's not really what we do. Mm -hmm. But we do like we like to have themes on our records because we like all the songs to be tied together. Um, we like to have like the album make sense as a whole, like if you listen to it from start to finish, as opposed to just being like a collection of of, of different songs. Um, yeah, it's definitely a breakup record. It's about separation. Uh, we say we call it We Disappear because we relate, like, we break up, you and I break up, we disappear to, we die, we disappear, we leave the world eventually. Well, let's even start, so, the very beginning of the album, there seems to be, a, like, at least at the beginning, a a bit of technology involved. I mean, the very first one's called Into the Code. What, what's that song? Because, I mean, I, 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 you know, having listened to it a handful of times, I can kind of, definitely the, the relationships dissolving and being destroyed happens. Where, how does Into the Code kind of fit into all that? A lot, yes. Yeah, so, so, like, the third theme of the record, the, the, the record is about love, death, and technology. Mm -hmm. And when we say technology, mean like the internet. Um, uh, um, Oh, a lot of uh, a lot of just our lives and our art, and, and and now you know for the past whatever fifteen or so years, maybe longer, uh, the internet is just like another thing that we all use to to be immortal, to to stay to stay around after we die. You know, we uh, the record isn't like railing against technology or the internet I it's like, like these kids with their with their internets today and their their grinders and whatnot it's it's not that well i mean that's all fine too but i mean that's not what i'm talking about i mean <laughs> what i'm like i'm addicted to the internet as much as anyone else i spend a ton of time on it and it, it's interesting to me that it's become uh, you know, it's a lot of it is kind of like what Andy Warhol would say, like everyone will be famous for 15 minutes. Like the internet gives you a chance to be famous while you're alive and for not doing too much is the thing. But like, obviously, you know, most people want to be famous in some way. We all want to be known. Um, the way we like present ourselves on social media is like, it's a lot of people's art. Like that is their art, like how they present themselves, how they want to be seen and known. Yeah, just the very, your very identity, your your own kind of personal, for lack of a, a horrible like term, like, like a, a branding of your of yourself as an actual human being. 
Yeah, you know, and sometimes you'll meet someone in person that you met online, and they'll be quite different because their whole persona online was something. It really is, yeah, it's like a brand. Like, uh, people are very meticulous about, like, how they present themselves, and obviously everyone's trying to present what they think is, like, the best version of themselves or the most interesting uh, version of themselves online. So, in the album... The, 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 they're, you know, but one of the big through lines as we're talking about is this sort of this breakup. And it's really interesting because it's sort of, it looks at it from like a lot of different perspectives from what I'm, I'm gathering. It's like happening like during, happening right after, happening like, you know, it seems like a, a ways in, in the future, like looking back on this, 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 uh, this failure. One of the first songs you released uh, is My Heart Went Cold. And that really does seem like, is that like, it seems to me like there's like a sabotaging, a knowing sabotaging of a relationship. Or am, am, I, am I getting that right? For me, okay, so we made one other record about relationships, and that was Personal Life from yeah. 2010. And like, when I went back and listened to it, um, it was what I was, it was definitely what I was feeling at the time, but it was like such a cold, cynical outlook on like the relationships I had been in, the relationship I was in at that time and just relationships in general. Um, and so I wanted to, something, I wanted to make something that was more honest for me. Like not that that wasn't honest, but I just feel differently now just looking back on the relationships that I've had and the mistakes that I've made. And so I was trying to make like a record. I was trying to write lyrics about love that were more, uh, realistic to where I am now. And, and, and for me, that meant, uh, like taking the blame for a lot of, you know, for the, for the relationships I've been in that have gone sour, which is all of them <laughs> at this point. Um, and you know, my heart went cold, just like, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, to me, that was a true story. Like I wasn't sure why I just kind of turned away from this person. My heart did go cold and I didn't like, not to like take the blame off my, it's, it's more to accept the blame. Like a lot of times in, in relationships, you know, when you talk to your, you talk to your friends after they break up with someone or, or, or after they get broken up with, they're always, all people do is talk about how the other person fucked up and how the other person made all the mistakes and right. what they did wrong. And it's rare for people to say, even when they've been broken up with, like, here are the mistakes I made and here's what I did wrong. Yeah. Well, uh, the, actually, what I want to bring back to the, actually the title of the album, which is actually in one of the tracks. Uh, there's a track called The Great Dying, which actually contains the title of the album, We Disappear. Talk about what's going on in that song and how it actually relates to the whole overarching theme of the album. The Great Dying is one of our favorite songs on the record. It really sounds different from any other song we've ever done. We've just never done a song like that. Um, we were trying to make, or at least I was trying to write songs... I was trying to write uh, like a 90s record. Like, I still love the 90s. I, you know, went to high school in the 90s, so most of my favorite bands are just like alternative rock bands or um, like emo bands before emo became eyeliner, et cetera. Um, so really like <laughs> before the, Saddle uh, Creek Records thing. is what you're saying, essentially. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, Saddle Creek, that's still real emo. You yeah. Know? I mean... Or, I mean, I think of Fugazi, really, even if they never call themselves an emo band. It's kind of, the early, earlier, like, Discord stuff, like, Rites of Spring is kind of what I think of as, like, the original emo band. But, um, you know, I don't know, I'm from California, too, so they were, they were kind of thinking of, like, bands like Indian Summer or Three Mile Pilot. Um, I don't know, a lot of bands that may not classify themselves as emo, but back then we were calling them all emo before, like, Panic at the Disco and Fall Out Boy or whatever, before emo became that, before emo became kind of this, like, uh, hard rock thing or whatever it turned into. Right. Um, so, yeah, so The Great Dying, um, yeah, to us, that's just like a, that's, that's an emo song. <laughs> and we don't, you know, we're known for doing fast, you know, short songs. And so we really wanted to make this big, like, wide, deep, 
Um, it's kind of, you know, it's like a dirge. It's like a, it's a death song. Yeah, and what's really cool is actually how it's pretty much. Um, I, I, I got it on vinyl, one of the awesome clear uh, vinyls, which is really, really cool. I, I don't know if they're still available, but people get them on, on Saddle Creek. Uh, they actually have like a clear vinyl version of this. It's actually the last song on the on side one. And it's sort of kind of the centerpiece of the whole album where you have this sort of like circular dirge right in the middle, uh, surrounded by kind of your classic thermals, you know, fun pop songs, which also have a very, very dark theme about, you know, relationships decaying around you and, and actual death. Um, I want to ask you about one of probably the more, I think you also released this one as sort of a, a single early on um, as, as uh, one of the videos that came out, uh, which is actually specifically dealing with death, and that's uh, Hey You. So tell us about Hey You. So Hey You, we were just trying to make just like a loud, crazy party song. Mm -hmm. Like... We're making a video soon for that, and I think it's just going to look like a beer commercial. So that's what that song sounds like. That's, it's a beer commercial, but it's also like a paranoid fantasy about trying to escape death. That, that whole song is just, uh, you know, it, it's just death is chasing you um, all the time. You're constantly running from death your whole life, um, and, and you'll never outrun it. <laughs> um so yeah, so obviously, obviously that's the, that's the, the perfect lyrics for like a uh, for a party song. But you know, to us, like a lot of times, our songs are the lyrics will be very dark um, and maybe even sad, but uh, the music will still be fun and hopefully uplifting. So yeah, even. Uh, even when we're writing like a party jam, we're still thinking about death. <laughs> Which is again why why I'm I'm such a big fan of you guys. Yeah, it's it's probably the most probably the most like upbeat song on the album. Just like tone like not 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 with the obviously content, but literally it's like this grave is like pointing at the at the lead singer and like saying you're coming like you're coming for him. It's 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 a great song. It's like, it's just, it's so it's so cheery yet unbelievably like dark at the same time. So so well done. <laughs> I, I'm really proud of it. Thanks. Yeah, like, it, it's a, uh, I mean, the lyrics are kind of complicated for it just being like a big dumb, because it really is a three chord. There are only three chords uh, in the uh, in the song. It's, it, you know, it's told from the point of view of, like, someone who's been framed by the government and is, like, running from, who you know, the FBI or CIA or someone. Uh, but it just turns out you're just running from the Grim Reaper. Like, you've just been framed by death. 